Again, welcome to CS101, Introduction to Programming Using Python. This lab work covers Chapter 7 of our course textbook, uh, which is lists and tuples. Uh, we already covered the lectures. In this uh, video, we are going to solve two problems using the lists and tuples. And also, as we said in the lectures, the reason why we use lists and tuples is when we have large data sets. For example, we have 20 cells data. We don't want to declare or use 20 different variables with 20 different names. So in this case, I can use a list or tuples. Now, one of the advantages of lists and tuples is that they come with a built-in functions that we can use to manipulate the data. So now if I'm using variables and I want to find the sum of 20 values, then I have to write the formula myself. But with lists, we have a function that we can use to find the sum of values in a list or to find the minimum, the maximum value, etc. So let's see our first problem. Here they say we should design a program that asks the user to enter stores cells for each day of the week. Now we have seven days of the week. Now the amount should be stored in a list. Then we are going to use a loop to calculate the total cells for the week and also display the result. So again, we have our main function. We declare the variable for the total cells. We initialize it to 0.0, .0 to make sure there's no any value in. Then we initialize our list. Our list name is daily cells, the first one. So here we have the values, the cells values up to seven days. Then the days of the week also, we have a list for that and weeks will be string. So we can see from Sunday to Saturday, each day we have it in a single code, which means it's a string. So we are using, again, two lists here. One list for the daily sales amount. The second list is the each day of the week. Now the question said we should use a for loop because also we can use the sum function that come with a list. A list is a data structure. It has its own built-in uh, functions or methods that we can use. But the question here said we should use the loop to calculate the total cells. So that's why we are going to use the loop. So we use the loop that for i in range seven, uh, the first item in a list is the index zero. So for seven weeks, we have from index zero to six. That's why the range is seven. So range seven means from zero to six. <clears throat> so for each item, we are going to enter our cells. So we have the input function and we tell the user to enter the cells for the days of the week. So we start, if the index is zero, we start with Sunday. So the days of the week here will be Sunday. And then, of course, we have to change the input to float or the, uh, a whole number, which can be int, because we are going to use it in our arithmetic operation. So as we said earlier, using input function, the data type for the value is a string. So if we need to do arithmetic operation, either we can change it to a decimal number, which is float, or we can change it to a whole number, which is int. So we enter the value into the daily cells list, starting from zero to six, seven uh, cells. And here also we have a loop saying that for the number in daily cells, we are going to add all. So total cells equal to total cells plus the number. So the number is like our counter variable that will go through all the items in daily cells and get each item. Each item you get, we are going to add it. So we start with the total cells is zero. So if the first value is 10, it then to be zero plus 10, and the new total cells will be 10. If the next value is 20, then it will be 10 plus 20, then 30. We are going to use this follow to go through all the items in the daily cells list. Then the next is to display the total cells. So we have a print that the total cells for the week is whatever amount. We format, use the format function to format it to two decimal places since it's a currency. <clears throat> then we call the main function to execute the code. 
So again, here in the lectures, we discuss it by a lot of uh, list functions. But the question here is that we should use a loop to calculate the total cells. So first we have our two lists, one for the day of the week, seven days, and also one is the daily cells for seven days. We use for loop to get the input for daily cells for each day. Then we use another for loop to find the total cells. Using the variable number, we are going to iterate or go through the daily cells values or the seven values. And each one, we are going to add it to total cells. Then after we finish, we print our total cells. Now let's see our second example. Um, we went too far. Actually, that is correct. Question number three from our textbook. So here yeah, they say we should design a program that lets the user enter the total rainfall for each of the 12 months into a list. So we need to use the list again. The program should calculate and display the total rainfall for the year. The average monthly rainfall, the month with the highest and the lowest also. So here we have two options now. They didn't tell us to use a for loop to find the total or the average, et cetera. So we can use the built-in functions that come with the list data structure. So let's start with the problem again. We have our main function. We declare our local variables. The first variable, we are going to store the total rainfall. Then they told us to find the average, also the highest rainfall, the lowest rainfall. Then we have the month lowest and also the month highest. So the list to receive the rainfall amounts. And the list name is month rain. And we have 12 months for the year. Then also we initialize a list with the names of the months, same as the previous example, days of the week and the daily sales. So here we have the month list from January to December. And it's a string. Now we need to get our input. So we get the amount of rainfall for each month. So for I in range 12, which means we have zero to 11 and there are 12 values for each month. We ask the user enter the rainfall for the first month will be January all the way to December. So now we have our input. So we can find, calculate the total. Now we can see here we are not using the, for loop to calculate the total no more. We use the built-in sum function. So sum, the, the argument of the sum will be the name of the list. So sum month rain. Let's go back. Month rain is our list that have all the 12 rainfall amounts. So if I want to find the sum of item in a list, I will use the sum and the argument of the List name will be the argument of the sum. So this will give us the sum. But they told us to find the average. So the average will be what? The total divided by 12.0. 12 because we want to get the result as a decimal value. <clears throat> we have 12 months, so divided by 12. Now to calculate the maximum rainfall, the same thing, we have a, a function name mass, which come with a list. So mass with the argument, of the list name. Next, they say we should get the index of the month with the highest rainfall. So to get the index, also we have a built-in function name index. So we start with the name of the list month rain dot the function name index and getting the, the highest. The argument is the highest. Then next, and so here we already know the highest value. So we use the mass function to find the highest. But here we want to know the index, get the index of the month. So uh, for example, January will be zero, December will be 11. Then next we calculate the minimum. So we also have a function name mean, the argument will be the list name. So this will give us the minimum value, return the minimum value in the month rain list. Then also we need to get the index of the month with the lowest rainfall. 
So we use the index function again. The argument is the lowest because we have the lowest. We already calculated the lowest. So that way to give us the position of the lowest value. And we are going to store it in a variable name mat lowest. Now we finish, we are going to display our results. So first we display the total rainfall. Then we display the average using the format function for both two decimal places for the total rain and also the average. Then the highest rainfall, the month highest, we already calculated it. Then we also have the month lowest, then the lowest rainfall month. So we call the main function and we do the execution. So that will be the conclusion of this lab work. So in this lab work, we solve two problems using a list. And also we see in our next uh, lab work. Thank you.